Anita's journey with Myla started like that of any pregnant mother. The excitement, the morning sickness, picking a name, and then the labor. It was Monday the 8th of June 2015. I was pregnant and I went to the clinic because I was experiencing a lot of pain, especially in my lower back. The sister examined me and called an ambulance to take us, me and the other pregnant moms, to the Kimberley Hospital. The doctor examined me and told me that it wasn't Myla's time to be born yet. He told me to come back on Thursday. So I went back home with the ambulance, but I still had a lot of pain. I told the ambulance driver and my mom that the pain wasn't getting any better. In the evening it got worse, so my sister called the ambulance again. They came and took me from Ritchie straight through to the Kimberley Day Hospital. The labor didn't progress well. The sister said the baby didn't want to come, but it was time for it to be born. So they transferred me from the day hospital to the main Kimberley hospital. There they used forceps and those things of theirs to take Myla out. They called it an assisted delivery, something like that. And so Myla was born on the morning of the 9th. Myla couldn't suck after she was born, and she cried a lot. She didn't want to latch on the breast. This went on for the whole day. The doctor was up and down checking on us. And finally, the doctor said they would not discharge me because Myla needed to suck first. I didn't know what to do. In the evening when my parents came, they told me that the child wasn't all right. It was not normal for her not to suckle the whole day. They asked the sisters to do something. And when the night sister checked Myla, she saw that she had a slight vibration to her. So she called the doctor, who examined Myla for a long time. And when she left, she said she would return. But she didn't come back that night. The next morning, Myla started fitting. The sister called the same doctor from the previous night and she came back with two other doctors. They asked me to leave while they examined her. And when I came back, she had needles in her hand and they had shaved her hair to put a drip in her head. Yes, that is what happened. And then they told me, Mommy, we're going to take Myla to high care because she is ill. Then they took her away and when I went to see her, she was in an incubator with machines and a feeding pipe and so on. I was very worried. I phoned my parents and told them what happened. My mom said, speak to the doctor so that you understand what, what is wrong and why your child is lying there. And when the doctor came, I asked him what was wrong with my baby. He said to me, Myla's brain went to sleep. The brain was injured during birth. So the brain has gone to sleep and now she has to wake up on her own. He said that they were going to lay, let her lay there with the feeding pipe and that was all and wait for her to wake up. That day he didn't explain everything to me. But when my mom came to see Myla, she spoke to him and he explained to us that when the brain gets damaged, then there could be a possibility that she might not be able to walk or talk and so on. And when Myla was discharged, they gave me letters, the referrals, to say that she should attend appointments here at the clinic with the physio and the therapist and the dietitian, and that they would follow up with us every month. It's not easy looking after a child with disabilities, but I think it was God's mercy that has carried us. I can't believe that Myla is turning seven in June. When I was pregnant, I googled many different names for their meanings. The name Myla was so unique, so I chose it. It means merciful. And I didn't know that I was making a prediction about her. When I look back these past seven years, I think her name was kind of prophetic. We've been carried by God's mercy. I'm grateful for my parents who kept encouraging me to ask questions and for my mother who asked when I didn't know what to do. 
and my father who takes care of us. I'm grateful for the support I have had from medical professionals right from the start. I didn't struggle to get appointments with the physio, the OT and the dietitian. They were very friendly and very helpful throughout. And I didn't struggle with transport because all the therapists came from Kimberley to our clinic. When she was four, she received her first buggy and in 2021, she got a new one. Myla now attends one of the two schools for children with disabilities, both of which were started by Christine. She started out at Cajiso and is now attending St. Sebastian's. At the school, they're doing other activities, but I share with the teacher what the OT does with her. We have to do it twice a day. So if she does it with her at school in the morning, we can do it with her before bedtime at home. Here at home, I have so much support. I have my mother and my younger sister, Melissa. Melissa. Melissa is mature beyond her years. She's someone that I can talk to. And the precious thing is there are times that she will just sit and listen to everything. I can unburden my whole heart. I can cry and she'll cry with me. But the biggest gift is the fact that she listens, even though she might not be able to give me advice. Just the fact that she listens means so much. I really have very good support at home. You know, the stress we feel as parents, it's not always about the child. How should I put it? Stress, stress about caring for the child is there, but sometimes it's the fact that you don't have someone to share it with. That makes it so much harder for mums because there might not be anyone who can take the child for a while to let you do something. Even just doing your hair and having someone look after the child and feed them. Sometimes we need that kind of support.